Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world after last episode when we went on a long romp through the countryside looking for traders, and we made some pretty good deals. And since then, I've been a little bit busy here at home, doing some chores, mostly working the fields, but I also managed to hook up the rest of the roads to our current fields and other work areas. So I have the road going back here, to the barn, and to all four of our fields. And I also have it going this way, to our second and newest apiary, and over to our cemetery, where some of the walnut trees I've planted for harvesting wood have started to sprout. I also trimmed the grass here, and I planted a few pieces of bony soil. And you know what? Thinking about this place in the mausoleum, I remembered that I forgot something. There is something that all good crypts must have, and that is cobwebs. Okay, so let's just scatter a few of these around here, mostly hanging from the ceiling, I think. Maybe one up here, and there. Sure, why not? Put one in that corner. I'll stick one, say, here. Yeah, we'll just kind of Fill some of these corners and things with it. Yeah, there we go. I think that should do nicely. Maybe one more. Sure. And now with the lantern off, yes, this just gives that much more atmosphere to the crypt beneath our mausoleum. Now, with our last episode having given me a taste of the outdoors, I'm kind of wanting to go on another adventure. And to some extent, I think I want to, once again, revisit some places we've already been. But I'm thinking, specifically, places that we haven't been since we first got copper armor. To the north of us here, we have a shallow cave that we explored a while back and we went in a little ways, but we turned back when we ran into Tainted Drifters and stronger enemies. So I would like to go and visit those places and maybe even delve even deeper than before. However, while our armor is good enough for dealing with Tainted Drifters, it's not very good for dealing with anything stronger than that. From the Corrupt Drifters to the Nightmare Drifters to the Doubleheaders, although those only appear in Temporal Storms, and there are other enemies we can meet in the depths that deal more damage alongside the Nightmare and Tougher Drifters. So prior to embarking on this journey, we are going to make a stop at our blacksmith, where I have also been busy making this stack of iron plates. And as the happy music commences, we can talk about what to do with these iron plates and why I have so many of them. A few episodes ago, we picked up this broken helmet and this broken cuirass from the Treasure Hunter Trader and I threatened to repair them and use them. And that's what we're going to do today, as well as making a set of iron plate leggings, because we were sadly unable to pick up the final piece of this set, but that's okay. So in order to repair these, we need the, of course, broken piece, and then three pieces of iron chain. And in order to upgrade from the damaged to the undamaged versions of these pieces, we need three iron plates. Now, a single piece of iron chain and a single piece of iron plate represent about the same amount of material. This melts into two iron ingots, so does each plate. So we need to smith ourselves six pieces of iron chain and six iron plates, and that will get us enough material to repair both of these pieces here. And we have 24 iron plates. So we're pretty good on that. The second thing we're going to do is make some iron plate leg armor, and this requires five more iron plates on top of a set of chain leg armor, which is six pieces of iron chain, so effectively six more iron plates, and then a leather jerkin for the legs. The last thing I want to do before we go on our adventure is to make ourselves a new shield because we now have the ability to make the Blackguard's Square Shield, which is an upgrade from our current 
reinforced round shield. It will protect against one more damage, both when actively blocking and when passively blocking. So I have, I think I made enough iron plates to get all of this done, but I guess we'll see. And we're going to start by smithing the iron chain that we're going to need for all three of the armor pieces. I learned this the hard way, but the best way to make chain is to start with an iron plate. And you and I are going to learn together just how many plates you can stack up in a forge. Apparently it's four. And we're going to heat these up. While you can just forge chain with a pair of ingots, because the chain is made in sort of a flat arrangement, and it's almost the exact same size as a plate, it's much easier to begin with a plate, especially if you have a help hammer set up. So if you're making a lot of chain, I highly recommend starting from plates. I learned this the hard way when I made an entire set of chain mail by hand. My elbows were killing me. We'll get these to temperature, and then we will hammer them out on the anvil. Okay, 900 should be good enough. So as you can see, you can start from a plate, which we showcased when I made the anvil in the first place. And now all we have to do, instead of smashing those ingots flat, all we have to do is knock out these few bits here. So this is a really easy way of getting the chain done. Just don't miss whatever you do. And like that, we have our first piece of chain. Time for a whole bunch more. Okay, so we have 11 pieces of iron chain, and we have 13 additional iron plates. Let's go put these to use. Our first order of business is, I think, repairing these pieces of armor. So let's go ahead and we will do that. We have a damaged piece and then we have the full health full everything piece let's do you next I'm looking a little better and looking great all right next we need to make the leather jerkin for the pants so let's grab some of this and I think it's just something like this isn't it yes Leg leather jerkin. You can wear this as armor, but if you look at the numbers, you can see why I would not recommend it. So we need that, and then it was something like... Uh, we need one more piece, don't we? We need one more piece. Of course we do. Well, back to the forge. The wind would stop right now, wouldn't it? Of course it would. Well, we're doing this the old-fashioned way, and you're going to see why we don't do these by hand. And there we have it, our last chain. And that is why we don't do this by hand. That was actually more efficient than the first time I made these, but I've learned a few lessons since I first made chain armor. Let's get back on track now, shall we? Where were we? Pants. Pants. Right. So, pants, pants, chain leg armor, iron, and then we should be able to... Aha! Plate leg armor. There we go. So now, we can put these on, and boy do we look dangerous and somewhat mismatched, but at least the cuirass somewhat covers our thighs, so we look a little bit less out of place. 
and boy are we slow. Oh man. Clonk, clonk, clonk. Let's put our regular armor back on. Because we have one more thing to make. Give me that. The Blackguard Square Shield requires a crude square shield. Two iron plates, one piece of charcoal, and your hammer. Oh, it actually... Mm-hmm. This is new. It didn't used to apply the durability of your original item in that way. It used to be you could use a nearly dead piece to make a completely brand new item, whether it's making plate mail from chain mail or anything else that has durability that is used in a recipe. So we're going to go ahead and make a second one of these. You can have this back. One square shield, two iron plates, one piece of charcoal, and one hammer. And bam! Now we're rocking it. Oh, we're missing one thing, aren't we? Our sword. There we go. Now we're dangerous. So, new armor and shield aside, we have a few preparations to make before we go. I'm going to put everything that we need in here. And then we've got a spare iron axe, because ours is almost dead. And a spare pickaxe and some torches. We're going to put this in here for the time being. And we're going to drop off our spears. Because this armor will make throwing spears difficult. And let me show you just how difficult. Let's go ahead and put this on after all. So as you can see, our ranged charge time is now only 40%. Which means that it's going to take more than twice as long as normal to throw a spear or pull back a bow. So pull back a spear, and now we're at full aim. Whereas normally, we would go like so. And the same is true for the bow. So here's a normal speed. And here is with the armor on. So as you can see, it is quite the detriment when using ranged weapons. So we will bring our bow just in case we need it as a backup, but I'm not counting on it. And we're going to focus on melee with the sword and our new shield. And I think we're going to take our current shield and we'll put it there. And just so we can get around the house faster, we are going to put our regular gambeson back on. In addition to slowing our walk speed and our ranged speed, the heavier armor also decreases the effectiveness of healing items. So with these combined, we're going to be at almost minus, what, 73%? That's a problem because our current poultices heal four hit points. We're going to be getting one from each of these. Now ideally, we'll hopefully be able to take our armor off and then heal up, but sometimes that isn't possible. So we're going to bring along something a bit stronger. We're going to put these away. And we're going to get out some of our powdered sulfur. We're going to get some linen. And then we're going to get a spare bowl. And we're going to go into our cellar here. And we're going to get some honey out of here. And we're going to make some honey sulfur poultices from linen. And that gets us four, so let's make a few of these. There we go. 16. You know, we could make one more set. Let's bring along two stacks. I'm probably being paranoid, but I'm a weenie. So in total, this is what we're going to bring with us. We're going to bring our new armor. We're going to bring one set of honey sulfur poultice from linen in our inventory and one in a basket. The basket is also going to have some spare torches, a spare pickaxe, and a spare axe, as well as a little bit of extra space for carrying any goodies we find. We have our sword, our shield, our bow. It's getting a little long in the tooth, but I don't think we'll be using it down there much, so it shouldn't be a problem. A regular pickaxe. We have two stacks of dirt. We have eight, nine meals, although this one's going to get eaten here real soon. We have our retractable rope ladder. We have 64 wooden ladders, shovel, Prospecting pick, sticks and flint for any spare tools we need, a knife for harvesting any good drifters we find down there, and I'm bringing along a wooden chest that we can leave at the entrance of the cave so that if we do find something really interesting but our inventory is clogged up, we can run back up, empty our inventory into the chest, and then head back down. 
Okay, I think I have our inventory set up the way I want it as well. So we have our square shield in our offhand that we can use when we are crouching. We have our blackguard short sword. And we will have our main hand holding our lantern for the moment. And that way I have easy access to dropping it and flipping to a sword so we can have both the shield and the sword in a fight. We have then the torches, also near at hand. We will have our armor here, and what we can do is we can swap these out, like so, with a right click. So I think what we can do is if we get badly hurt and we are wearing our blackguard armor, we can then swap into this armor, use our poultices while we're running away from drifters and whatever, heal up, and then get back into the battle as we put our armor back on and slow down a lot really quickly. Then we have our food here, and then we have our soil here. And we'll swap these out as we need for things like ladders and so on. The bow, I'm going to keep off the hot bar. I think we'll only dig it out when we find ourselves at a good distance from enemies, and I don't kind of see that as being particularly commonplace where we're going. So with that, I'm going to set off, and I will see you all there. Okay, we are here. I'm going to drop off this chest right there and we are going to go in. Now, for now, I'm going to leave my heavy armor in the hot bar until we get down to probably where we start seeing tainted drifters. And you know what? I am going to just dump some torches here so that we are less likely to have to fight our way home. Is this really the cave that we went into? Well, there's only one way to find out. And that is to actually go and check it out. some growly boys already. Off to our left over here. I wonder if it would be worth digging out this way before we go down. Let's drop some torches first. And we'll send a few down this way. And here's where we stopped last time. Okay. Good to know. And our gear is going backwards like crazy again. I forgot about that. I kind of want to take a peek at if I can get up here at what might possibly be over in this direction. Let's go here. Aha! There is more over here. Hey, buddy. <gasps> Goodbye. Well, we will save this for future exploration. I want to go down here first, and I suspect these may connect. So for now, that goes there, and we replenish our torches. Okay, let's go. And here is where we went out last time. Down you go. Bye, buddy. Okay, I think... That is a nightmare drifter. Oh, we are deep in the earth. No wonder. Okay, well, we're going to get our armor on for this one. Well, I think we're somewhat insulated from them over here. So, let's go ahead and we will drop down. I'm not used to our movement being this slow. Let's see what's over here. A whole lot of nothing. Some saltpeter. Yep, that is dead end up there. Okay. Oop. That, that was not great. And there they all go. Okay, we are going to try this out. Okay, well this might get us killed. Actually, you know what? This is going to get us killed. Alright, guys. interesting. Well, I feel kind of cheesy now. I think we could probably take them at this point. Let's give it a whirl. Why not? Right? What could possibly go wrong?
Okay, well, this is a good chance for us to back off. Use this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're healed up. And we are moving on. I think the solution is going to be to leave the drifters unharvested. Oh, yeah, that's good. Dead end. And that way, they will take up the spawn cap, and we can just not worry about them. Oh, jeez. You guys hit like a truck still, no matter what I do. They just don't stop coming, do they? There's some bismuth here. You do not give up, do you? Alright, come on. Boy, this is just a slog, isn't it? Oh, you're a nightmare drifter. Ow! You actually hurt. Okay. I'm just see if we can grab some of this bismuth ore. At least make something out of this trip, right? It's probably the least valuable thing I could take from this place, but... Yeah, you know what? You guys just don't stop, do you? Okay, anything worthwhile down here? No, there's not. Okay. Well, let's march our way back up top to here. There's just some lava down there. I don't see anything. I see some drifters. I don't see anything else compelling down here, though. Nope. I don't want to get knocked down there by a drifter attack, so... Let's go up here. Oh, hello, buddy. Do you have to? And we are going to... See what's up here. Drop a torch. Watch over this way. Plenty of bismuth. As I think we already knew, we were going to find a lot of that here. This... I have no idea what this is. Is this bismuth worth it, or not really? Yeah, we'll take it, why not? Cover this so we don't fall in and get stuck in there. I forgot the basket. Well, it's gonna be, we're gonna have to be a little more conservative with all of our torches we're placing. Hey, buddy. Yeah, hi. Okay, let's get back up there now. I still hear groaning. From over here. Sure. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, what do we have here? Saltpeter. We've got some more caves. If you spot any ruins... Shout, and I'll hear it. Hey, buddy. No, thank you. Okay, we have some rich copper. Should I take some here? Yeah, why not? Okay, we got that all dug out. And let's start heading back this way toward whatever last split there was in the cave. I believe it was right here. Came up from there, so we're going to mark this off here. It's really dark. This will tell us not to go this way. In fact, you know what? We're going to tell the drifters not to come this way either. That should keep them back. So let's head on this way. Oh, not one of you. Ouch. Ah, get out of here. Ah. Oof. Well, this hit like a truck. Yikes. Okay, well, it's healing time. And you... Take a hike. And, oh. Apparently 
you're here too. Hey, buddy. Now, that sound you heard was the sound of a bell. They are terribly annoying enemies who don't deal any damage, but they can call allies. And we're going to try to go take it out if we can find it. It was somewhere... There you are. Okay. I'm going to bring that drifter this way first. Hey, buddy. Let's get in here. We're going to try to kill this bell. These are really annoying. Yeah. You have a ton of hit points, too. The thing with these is that if you don't take them out first, they will keep calling... Ooh. They will keep calling enemies. And will beat the pants off you eventually. That is a ton of bad guys. We're going to just sort of hunker down here. Let them come to us. Okay, got him. We have one more drifter down there who wants to come out. Like, come on, buddy. Yeah, you smell us. There we go. Let's go take out that bell a little more. There we go. Got him. Do you mind? Sheesh. Well. That was certainly an adventure. Now, for our trouble there, that bell dropped a resonance archive, which this is our first one, I think? Or maybe we got one as treasure. I'll have to look. But these are pretty rare items to find, so that's a pretty good catch. Even if the bell itself was kind of a pain. I think I'm going to leave this copper here, but I will mark it as being right here. And then I think we'll sort of dig our way this direction a little bit and see what's over here. Our armor's already taken a beating. Okay, what have we down here? You know what? We're just going to plug you. I don't think you're serving much of a purpose here, buddy. Let's march on down here. And we have... At that end with a drifter. Okay. That's fine. And I think we might be close to heading back to the surface here soon. Just because I think we might be out of cave branches to explore. Hello, buddy. Back this way we go. Up here. Across the water. And he does his weird run thing. We cannot get past the water. There we go. So let's make our way out of here for now. And we are going to be back in just a moment. Okay. We are back. And this time we have our basket on our backs. So let's head back in and see what there is to see. As we were heading back up there, there was one little offshoot that looked like it was a dead end. So I think I want to check out what's in here now and see what we can find off in this direction. So we are going to do exactly that. Let's see what's up first. And then we'll head down. Oh, this appears to be a cave exit. Okay. Well, that's fine. Assuming this glow is indeed yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change in the map the colors of these two, let's say, oh, I don't know, violet. And that way we will know that they are both part of the same cave network. And the water looks like it stops there. That shouldn't be a problem. Let's go, let's follow the water upstream first. A whole lot of nothing, okay. Well, we are just going to mark this off as having been explored and head off in this direction. 
directions plural, apparently. Let's check out what's here first. Dead end, okay. Oh, there's perhaps more up that way, too. There is. Does it go anywhere? No. Okay. Now down here, I hear a friend. Hey, buddy. Ow! Dang. You guys hit hard that time. Mm -hmm. Now, how come they get to knock me back, but I deal as much damage to them as they do to me, and they get scooted back six inches, whereas I get knocked back like... I just go flying. Okay. Oh, more of you. Okay. I can do this all day, guys. Okay, there's... Oh, there's down there. A lot of down there. And what's down here? Dead end. Okie doke. And before we do anything really wacky, let's go ahead and explore this way first. Getting away from that first. Oh my. These are certainly some caves. There's certainly some bismuth. Oh, hey, dude. Can you not? And your buddy is here, too. There we go. Well, this just... Oh, goes to the dead. And we have some random sand here. You know what? That might actually be kind of interesting. To see what happens. If we bust that, there's some water over there. Oh, that's just the water from above, I think. But, you know what? <gasps> no! Oh, this is neat. Oh, this is cool. Oh, we're going in there. We are going to... Try to swim into here. Oh, there's a spilio thing we can't get past. Now there's a bunch of stuff we can't get past. Let's bust you out. Oh, uh, no. Can we not? Ah, darn it. Come on. Ah, those are so annoying. Those things also shred your armor like nothing else's business. Let's go in from the side here like this. I think this should be high enough. Ah, no. Come on, buddy. Come on. Down you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him. All right. That was fun. So these are a cool find. These are glowworms. And unfortunately, you can't do anything with them. You can't move them. If you break them, they just disappear. And I'll break this little guy to show that. Yeah, they just kind of go away, but they are neat to find. They're just pretty cool. And we're going to see what else this cave might have. Unless it's more of those, and then we're going to just get out of here. Because I am not interested. I don't see much yet. I think this is just a little... a little cave. Full of glowworms. Someday, when and if it's possible to harvest these, I would totally come back here to get these. Well, as a consolation prize for having to deal with that really annoying enemy. I am going to, I guess, fight some drifters, aren't I? I'm going to take some of this bismuth while we're here. Oh. Here comes someone. It's you. I missed you. Okay, so that was that direction. And we're going to mark this as having been explored. So now, I think we have... Nothing over here. Okay. And now... I'm going to chuck one of you down there. Oh, that is real far down. Okay. I wonder if this goes back to the cave we were in before. Only one way to find out. 
Oh, I see a party down there. That's what I see. Okay. Well, we are going to let them have their little party. And we're going to head back up. Well, I do think we may have explored everything there is to see in that cave. Or if not, then we have to sort of wind our way back in for a while before getting back to it. But, there is another cave that I wanted to check out. And it's the one that we found several episodes ago when I happened to look down near this trader and spotted a ruin right by the surface. But how close are we getting here? Four days, all right. So I wanted to check out what's down here because this cave looks much more navigable in general. But this cave is interesting, not least because this keeps everything from getting to us while we're up here. At least for now. We're going to block these off, though. I'm going to not destroy them. If I can help it. Yeah. That way, when we come back, we can just break these and get our water back. But I want to head down here and see what there is to see. Maybe this ruin being here is a good sign that there could be other ruins deeper inside. Oh. Is... What? This is it? Really? We're just going to pretend this didn't happen. But how about this hole over here? Are you at all interesting? Why, we've been down here before. Ooh, he could be interesting. There's also one over here that I think has sort of like two directions it goes. Yeah. Tell you what, let's drop down here instead. and see what there is to see. Let's go, why not this way first? Well, that's why. Okay. And then this way. Same thing. Oh. Maybe not. Well, we know these two are connected now, so there's that. Also a deep pit there that we don't want to fall down. But also this up here. Up we go. Oh, you're just nothing, okay. Okay, well, you just go straight down, don't you? Oh boy. I think I like going down this side a little more. Yeah, let's try that. can already see all the bad guys. Okay, there's just one, but whatever. Ah, there are your friends. I knew you had friends. Really? Okay, that's how you want to play it, huh? Smack you a little bit. One down. What do we have here? We have a little ruin. Ah, uh, oh, with rotten tapestries. Rats. Which may have gotten the tapestries, incidentally. What else have we got down here? We have big hole. Change into our battle jammies. Well, this just smells like a death trap to me. Which I guess is why we're going here, isn't it? Nightmare drifters. Corrupt drifters. There's just so many friends down there. Well, we can take a little romp, I guess. Don't see any ruins from here, though, which is kind of what I'm after. I just see too many Nightmare Drifters. And just as my stability got so low, I was hearing music, I killed a Nightmare Drifter and got it all back. Always good news. Here we go. Oof. Tough crowd. Well, I don't see anything really enticing from here, so I think we're gonna call this one a bust too. And I want my consolation prize. Let's take it. Okay. I have gotten my consolation prize. And we... are going to back out of here. That... situation down there seemed a little too hot for my liking, so... we're gonna call that a win on the Drifter's part. They can keep that place. It's all... 
theirs. We have a few other places we could check out, but I think we have done a lot of exploring for today. And unfortunately, we still haven't found the thing that I am looking for. And for those of you who are not aware, I am specifically looking for, it's called a static translocator, which is a fancy way of saying a teleporter that would take us to faraway lands. And they can send you up to, I think, something like eight or 10,000 blocks away, which is eight or 10 kilometers. It's a great way to uncover completely new areas and find new kinds of stone that just aren't anywhere near your home. And they need to be repaired using a combination of these metal parts and three temporal gears. Now, we have a few temporal gears. Just a few. So, as you can see, we have a lot of one thing and not a whole lot of the other. And I have been watching some other Vintage Story YouTubers who have the opposite problem, where they have a thousand translocators and zero temporal gears. So, if I could trade some of these for some of those, I would. Guys, anybody? Anybody out there? Please, I'm begging you. Oh, I stopped my armor on. Well, I think we're going to call the exploration there for the night. I've been at this for several hours now. And I think we're going to, at least for now, call off the translocator search. And maybe we will stumble on one in the future. So I now have in this chest everything that we have gotten from our adventure. So let's take a look. We got a pretty good haul this time. We got one resonance archive from that bell, which was a heck of a fight considering they have 100 hit points and our sword deals 5.3 damage minus 20% because we are the hunter class. We also got three stacks and one piece of rich native copper. We got one stack and change of rich bismuthonite, a smattering of medium bismuthonite, a couple rusty gears, some metal scraps, a bunch of metal parts, a whole bunch of granite stones and a little bit of cobblestone. We got one rich crystallized chunk of copper, a little bit of aged wood planks. We got a new sturdy belt, which I might actually replace. You know, we'll just wear it. It's already in terrible shape, and we can't even see it anyway. There, there's our belt. We got one more aged wooden bed, and we got the right third of the rot tapestry. Now, by itself, this is just a decorative piece, but when we get all three of them, then we could actually get a new entry in our journal. Now, when we found this, the other two pieces had rotted away. Irony being what it is. So we'll have to keep on the lookout for this. And I think we can get these at the artisan traders, maybe the luxuries traders as well on occasion. But we'll see. And maybe we'll hang it for now. Well, everyone, that is going to be a wrap for our episode today. I hope you enjoyed our journey underground, as well as our ability to dive deeper thanks to the new armor we have. Now, you'll notice it took a beating. Our chest piece was already down by about 20-25%, so we still have to be careful with it. Anyway, my name has been Kurzar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.